Gold Enrichment Zone Gold has captivated civilizations throughout history, not merely as a symbol of wealth, but as a testament to the geological forces that shaped our planet. While many imagine gold hidden deep beneath the surface, some of the most valuable concentrations are actually found in the upper portions of ore deposits. These are known as gold enrichment zones. A gold enrichment zone is not a separate deposit, but rather a modified part of an existing one, enhanced through natural geochemical processes. Over time, water interacts with sulfide-rich rocks near the surface, oxidizing and breaking them down. In this process, gold particles are released, transported downward by percolating water, and then redeposited in a narrow layer, often just below the oxidation boundary. This zone, enriched with a higher concentration of gold, can greatly increase the economic potential of an otherwise low-grade or body. The formation of these zones is influenced by several factors, including climate, rock type, water chemistry, and the presence of reactive minerals. In tropical or arid regions, where weathering is intense and water movement is steady, enrichment can be especially pronounced. Gold enrichment zones play a critical role in modern mineral exploration. Identifying these zones can mean the difference between an uneconomical project and a profitable mine. For geologists and mining companies alike, understanding how these zones form, and where they are likely to occur, is essential in evaluating the true value of a gold deposit. What is a gold enrichment zone? A gold enrichment zone refers to a distinct geological layer within a mineral deposit where gold concentration has been significantly increased through natural secondary processes. These zones are not the result of the initial formation of the ore body, known as primary mineralization, but rather the consequence of later chemical and physical alterations, often occurring near or just beneath the Earth's surface. This natural enrichment can transform a deposit that was once considered sub-economic into a viable mining target. In most cases, gold enrichment zones develop within or just beneath the oxidation zone of a deposit. This is the upper part of an ore body that has been exposed to air and water over long periods of time. Rainwater or groundwater percolates down through fractured rock, interacting with sulfide minerals such as pyrite, FeS2, and arsenopyrite, FeASS. As these minerals oxidize, they release sulfuric acid and other byproducts, which in turn dissolve and mobilize the gold contained in the ore. This mobilized gold travels downward with the water until it reaches a point where the geochemical conditions change, often in the supergene environment just below the water table. Here, the gold can precipitate and accumulate again, sometimes along with secondary minerals such as gathite, hematite, or clay minerals. The result is a relatively narrow but highly concentrated zone of gold enrichment. Gold enrichment zones vary in thickness and grade depending on local geological conditions. In some cases, they may only be a few meters thick but can contain gold concentrations several times higher than the primary or beneath or above them. These zones are particularly common in tropical climates, where intense weathering and leaching processes are more active. From a mining perspective, identifying and understanding gold enrichment zones is of critical importance. Their presence can significantly influence economic assessments, mine design, and extraction strategies. In exploration, enriched zones are often the first targets due to their high-grade nature and proximity to the surface, making them more accessible and cost-effective to exploit. In summary, a gold enrichment zone is the product of nature's own refining process, redistributing and concentrating gold through weathering, oxidation, and groundwater movement. These zones are not only key indicators of subsurface mineralization but also essential components of many economically successful gold deposits around the world. How do gold enrichment zones form? The formation of gold enrichment zones is a complex, multi-stage process driven by the interaction of geological, chemical, and climatic factors. These zones are not formed during the initial emplacement of gold-bearing ore, but rather as a result of secondary, supergene, processes that alter the composition and concentration of gold within an existing deposit. At the heart of this phenomenon lies the long-term action of weathering, groundwater flow, and redox reactions occurring within the shallow crust of the earth. 
The process typically begins with the exposure of a primary gold deposit, often hosted in sulfide-rich rocks such as quartz veins, volcanogenic massive sulfides, or hydrothermal alteration zones. Over time, these rocks become subject to chemical weathering, a surface-driven process where oxygen and water infiltrate the rock mass, initiating oxidation of sulfide minerals such as pyrite, chalcopyrite, and arsenopyrite. The oxidation of these minerals not only releases sulfuric acid, iron, and other byproducts, but it also plays a critical role in mobilizing gold. Although gold is generally considered chemically inert and insoluble under most natural conditions, it can be transported in solution as gold complexes, especially when ligands such as chloride, thiosulfate, or cyanide are present. These gold-bearing fluids migrate downward through fractures and porous rock units under the influence of gravity and hydraulic pressure. As the gold-laden fluids move deeper, they eventually reach a geochemical barrier, usually located just below the oxidation reduction boundary or water table. In this zone, the environment transitions from oxidative to reducing conditions. Here, gold is no longer stable in its dissolved form and begins to precipitate, often along with iron oxides, like gethite or hematite, clay minerals, or organic matter. This precipitation results in the formation of a supergene enrichment zone, typically characterized by much higher concentrations of gold than those found in the primary ore. Several factors influence the efficiency and extent of gold enrichment, including Climate, warm, humid, or tropical climates accelerate weathering and leaching, promoting deeper and more pronounced enrichment zones. Host rock composition, permeable and fractured rocks facilitate fluid movement and gold transport. Water chemistry, the presence of ligands, pH, and redox potential affect how gold dissolves and reprecipitates. Time, enrichment zones can take thousands to millions of years to fully develop, depending on the persistence and intensity of weathering. It is important to note that not all gold deposits develop enrichment zones. These zones form under specific conditions and are typically found in epithermal, porphyry, and greenstone belt-type gold systems, especially those that have been uplifted and exposed to surface weathering. From a geological and mining perspective, the formation of gold enrichment zones offers significant advantages. Because the gold has been naturally concentrated near the surface, these zones often represent the most economically attractive part of a deposit. Their identification can be a key driver in early-stage exploration and feasibility assessments. In conclusion, gold enrichment zones are formed by a natural sequence of oxidation, mobilization, and reprecipitation, operating within a delicate balance of geochemical conditions. This transformation represents nature's own refining process, an invisible alchemy beneath our feet that has turned marginal ores into high-grade resources across the globe. The Economic and Mining Importance of Gold Enrichment Zones Gold enrichment zones represent one of the most economically significant features within many gold-bearing deposits. These zones, formed through secondary processes, can drastically alter the value, feasibility, and development strategy of a mining project. For both exploration geologists and mining companies, identifying and correctly interpreting enrichment zones is often a decisive factor in whether a deposit is considered viable or not. The most immediate and tangible economic impact of a gold enrichment zone is the increase in ore grade. In many primary deposits, gold occurs in low concentrations, often dispersed finely within sulfide minerals. These low-grade ores may be uneconomical to mine, especially in times of depressed gold prices or in remote locations with high operational costs. However, the presence of an enrichment zone, typically located just beneath the oxidized cap of a deposit, can elevate gold concentrations by several times. What was once a marginal resource becomes a high-grade, near-surface or zone capable of generating significant profit margins. This concentration of gold near the surface offers major operational and financial advantages. Shallow enrichment zones are often accessible via open-pit mining methods, which are typically less expensive, less risky, and faster to develop than underground operations. Furthermore, enriched or usually exhibit simpler metallurgy due to the oxidation and breakdown of sulfide minerals. This can reduce processing costs, 
improve gold recovery rates, and eliminate the need for more complex and hazardous extraction methods such as pressure oxidation or bioleaching. Beyond the direct benefits in mining and processing, gold enrichment zones also hold strategic exploration value. These zones often serve as geochemical indicators of deeper, more extensive mineralization. By identifying enrichment at the surface, geologists may infer the presence of a larger, concealed primary gold system at depth. In this sense, enrichment zones act as a beacon, guiding further drilling and resource modeling efforts. They can also extend the life of a mine by providing high-grade feedstock in the early years of operation while deeper resources are being developed. Another key consideration is risk mitigation. Because enrichment zones are usually located at shallow depths, they are less capital-intensive to explore and develop. This makes them attractive to junior exploration companies and mid-tier producers seeking to minimize upfront investment while maximizing early cash flow. In some cases, enriched zones can be mined as standalone operations, especially in regions where infrastructure is limited or environmental regulations are stringent. However, the economic importance of gold enrichment zones must be approached with caution. Their narrow vertical extent and lateral variability can pose challenges in resource estimation and mine planning. Without detailed geological modeling and precise drilling, there is a risk of overestimating the continuity or grade of the enriched material. In some cases, what appears to be a high-grade zone in surface samples may thin out or become discontinuous at depth. Therefore, careful evaluation through geostatistics, grade control, and metallurgical testing is essential. From a global perspective, some of the world's most productive gold mines owe their early success to well-developed enrichment zones. Examples include Yanacocha in Peru, Boddington in Australia, and parts of the Carlin Trend in Nevada, where supergene processes have enriched large volumes of gold-bearing rock, often within easy reach of surface mining equipment. In conclusion, gold enrichment zones hold profound economic and strategic importance in the mining industry. They can transform the viability of a project, reduce operational costs, and accelerate development timelines. For geologists and decision-makers alike, understanding the formation, distribution, and behavior of these zones is not merely a scientific curiosity, it is a fundamental requirement for successful gold exploration and resource development.